Four by fours, jungle, water, and mud. This is the 2008 Land Rover Experience Tour in Malaysia. Malaysia lies 10,000 kilometers from Europe in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The trip lasts for seven stages, 1,200 kilometers right across the country. The starting point for the off-road tour is unusual, by ship from the island of Langkawi to Malaysia. 1,600 people applied to take part, only six were chosen. Among the lucky few are Iris and Marcus, experiencing the adventure together. Well, I expect to take away a great many experiences and to have fun with the team, experience the team spirit. The six of us get along extremely well. I hope that my partner and I will make a good team and that we complete all our tasks well, find all the checkpoints and that nothing serious goes wrong. Yes, Iris is driving and I'm navigating. No, not really. We'll discuss who's going to do what, and I think it'll work itself out after a while. That may be, but it won't be a walk in the park. What can the participants expect? You never really know with Malaysia. We found a route that goes straight across the country. We'll drive through the jungle, which is very strongly dependent on the weather. So if we're lucky and it rains a lot, it'll be great fun for the participants. Then the roads will be more like rivers than roads. For the first few kilometers of the tour, the participants are still driving on tarmac. Back home, Marcus works as an Airbus pilot and is an enthusiastic off-roader. After 150 kilometers, the tarmac runs out. Now it's off the road and into the jungle. Iris takes charge during the first difficult off-road stretch. Before the Malaysia trip, she had no off-road experience. This test of jungle driving skill is taken in standard Land Rover Freelanders. 152 diesel horsepower combined with an intelligent four-wheel drive system. For starters, there's lots of mud, which means heavy on the gas pedal. Despite the steep incline and a lot of mud, the PhD student from Tübingen copes with the challenge. You just had to keep your foot on the gas so that you didn't get stuck. I think at the end we really slid a lot, but you can't avoid that. But it was okay to drive, we got onto the waffle boards and there's no other way to do it. There are lots of things that can't be avoided in the Malaysian jungle. Even getting to grip with low horsepower is part of the experience tour adventure. So it's fallen exactly where we wanted it to be. And it's happened a little quicker than I thought, but in the end exactly what we wanted. Now we have to strip it and pull it to where we need it and make it a little smaller so that it fits exactly into the bridge. In die Richtung ziehen, wo man haben müssen, ein bisschen kleiner machen, dass er genau auf die Brücke passt und dann denke ich mal, können wir drüber fahren. The team is stuck. The bridge across the ravine is old and dilapidated. There's no way it will hold the convoy of heavy 4x4s. We use the the small timber there, uh, put underneath, and then roll. So like a roller. And then uh, when winching time, if anything got stuck, we have to keep an eye on it so that we can uh, glide it on the old bridge. Teamwork is required. To get the convoy over the ravine, they must build a bridge, and in Malaysian fashion, eight thick trees connect the two sides of the narrow crossing. I think we've been building this bridge for more than two hours now, which we didn't expect. This obstacle wasn't planned. We thought we'd be able to get over easily. 
The climate doesn't make the situation any easier for any of the participants. We're in the tropics on the equator, and the sun really burns down. It's 35 degrees, you're pouring with sweat the whole time, you really have to make sure you drink enough, and besides that, it's really strenuous. The team is stuck at this point for four hours, but slowly and surely all 12 cars in the convoy make it to the other side of the ravine. The Freelanders we have here are normal production cars, as you can see. We've added under-ride protection to protect the undercarriage from mud and sludge, and roof racks for carrying our tires. And that's actually the most important alteration, the tires. The ones we're using here have a somewhat rougher profile. The highlight of the 10-day journey is the tea plantation region of the Cameroon Highlands. Land Rover after Land Rover can be seen driving through this mountainous area in the middle of Malaysia. Early Defender models from the 50s are particularly in evidence as they provide an indestructible means of transport for the tea farmers. During the tour, they'll sleep in the middle of the jungle. Every evening, the team pitches a large group tent. So, it was another tough day today, and now we have finally reached the campsite. As you can see, we've already done some setting up. The cooking area is already set up. Alina and Stefan will have something good for us to eat soon. Uh, your job is to pitch our communal tent. The equipment is already set out. We should be finished in around an hour, because then it'll be dark. If everyone sets to, then it'll be all go smoothly. No sooner said than done, everyone sets to work and after a brief discussion, progress is already visible. After an hour, the tent is up. After dinner, the first day's experiences are shared. Their constant companions in the jungle are mosquitoes. Marcus passes around the insect repellent. Six thirty AM is time to get up. Well, it was really okay. I imagined it would be more unfamiliar. The background noise was actually quite pleasant, like I imagined it at home. Lots of insects, a couple of monkeys now and then. It was really lovely. Oh, I think it's quite an interesting trip. A jungle route with relatively few roads, many forest paths, jungle paths, mud, sludge. It rained a lot in the last few days. The rain has swollen little streams to deep rivers. The next obstacle for the convoy of Land Rovers. This is where the team's good preparation has its effect. Two days training in Germany are paying off. Every river is different. Here, they're forced to stop. I'm pretty confident that they'll cope. They've recognized the problem and are certain that we can't go forwards or backwards, but I think they'll find the right solution and at some point we'll be able to carry on. Misappropriation. They build a bridge with steel planks, which are actually desert equipment. Iris inches her way into the river in her Land Rover, with Marcus waving her along so that she won't get stuck. But just beyond the next curve, the next difficulty is lying in wait for the young team. We've just driven a little way back, and I'll try again to get up at full throttle. Success, after 1,200 kilometers through the heart of Malaysia, the participants reach the east coast. The countryside is just beautiful, and the opportunity to drive a car like this through scenery like this is one that few people will have. An adventure is ending for Iris and Marcus, but before the end of the year, six new lucky applicants will be chosen for the next experience.